but of course, uh, please have a seat. Um, this table is ever so convenient. It just feels like everything I need is right here. Uh, would you like something to eat? Uh, and there's plates in front of um, there, there's plates in front of all the little chairs there. Um, are are you hungry at all? Well, I suppose oh. a bite couldn't hurt. Uh, whatever you want will just appear on that plate. Uh, what are all of your favorite foods? Hmm. Well, I can't say no to some... <laughs> some uh, chocolate-covered ants. Uh, and you see that the chocolate-covered ants are now just kind of on the plate, perfectly arranged. There's a nice, uh, in addition to, like, the chocolate, there's another, like, white chocolate drizzle that's kind of over the top. Uh, sp spread uh, spread over it. It looks uh, like very fine dining. She's an interesting palate, uh, no doubt. An interesting palate. Um, personally, I don't know, my mood shifts all the time. Uh, like, right now, I was, I was been drinking... Um, been drinking tea, uh, but now that I'm in the mood for coffee, that'll sweat will be in the glass. Uh, and she kind of leans back and kind of pours some of it. Uh, and as she lifts her hands up, she like it's it's very un. Uh, she's acting very civilized, but it's very uncivilized the way she just opens her mouth and coffee just seems to pour out of the mug, uh, which is the teacup, which is now turned into a mug, uh, and into her mouth. Uh, and she looks down. This place really is paradise. Anything I need. As the great wizard Bartholomew, I'm far more partial to energy drinks. Oh, Bartholomew, we haven't chatted in ages. It's so wonderful to see you again. Indeed, I always like to visit my favorite clients. You sound different. Oh, the walk up here did quite a number on me. That's yes. why I believe we should stay here for a Ah, uh, yes. Understandable. Understandable. In that case, uh, please take seats. I, I never... I haven't... Sorry, I haven't caught any of your names yet. Uh, you obviously... You know me. I am Chatter. Um, Chatter. Uh, Chatter. And she kind of, like, stops and thinks for a moment. Yes, Chatter. Ch Chatter. Oh, uh, Chatter. Yes, I'm Chatter. Uh, what are your names? Uh, Bartholomew. Uh, we know each other, of course. We're acquainted. I am at least really nice to meet you. Elysia, what a pretty name. Uh, Elysia, it's it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Uh, and you, sir? Looks to you, are you? Othgurit Sharikrix, known in many lands as the Bone Napper. I am a man of great hunt, and I provide bone weapons for many acquaintances and friends. Ooh, bone weapons. Uh, and is that one that you have on your... Uh, is that one that you're carrying there? Yes. Oh, how lovely. Uh, may I see it? Yes, you may. Please be careful. I have had it since childhood. Oh, I will be very gentle with it. Uh, and she reaches out and kind of goes and, and picks it up. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of tiny in her giant hand. Uh, but she kind of moves it around a little bit. A little small for my particular taste, I, I, but um, it's it's very beautifully constructed. You've done a you've done a fine job of this, and and you fight with it. Yes, I go on many hunts with my halberd. Oh yes, very good. Uh, and she kind of hands it back to you. You see, I have this here, uh, and she picks up that big, big, big club uh, that she has over kind of uh, that she has over next to her, uh, and kind of lifts it, uh, kind of hefts it in the air, and. This club, like I said, it's like three times her height. Uh, she kind of swings it around. It looks like she's just holding like a foam sword. Uh, it moves from the air. You can hear it like just chat destroying the wind just because like of how long it is at the end of it, just it breaking the breaking the air. Uh, but she doesn't seem to notice it because it puts it back down with a, uh, a mighty heave. It breaks some of the stone circle that you're standing on. Uh, and that stone circle like almost instantly repairs itself as she puts it back down. Um, and she goes... Oh, wonderful! Uh, and looks and you. I hadn't caught your name yet. I am Frostbite. Uh, Frostbite. Uh, it's nice to meet you as well. I, I've never seen, and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry if this is rude. I've never seen a creature quite like you before. Ah, uh, well, my kind hail from a, another region. So another but... region. Yes, another region of the world, I guess. Uh, what region? We call it the Hive. 
Ah, the hive. Uh, I, like I said, I, I'm unfamiliar. I'm curious. Uh, and I, are you a a spider person? Is that what? What is the proper name? Well, I guess the proper name doesn't translate well into the common tongue. Most refer to us as were spiders or spider therians. Mm. Uh, spider therians. Oh, sort of, uh, sort of like a lichen, like a lichen spider. That's very yes. interesting. Uh, like a lichen spider. I, I like it. it. It's very nice to meet you as well. So it was frostbite, yes? Yes. Oh, wonderful. So what brings you all to the wood today? Uh, some polite conversation. Oh, well, I don't know if you know this about me, but I happen to enjoy a bit of polite conversation. I'm actually the lesser god of polite conversation. Did you know that? Indeed. Really, it's that... always so nice having discussions with you. Uh, yes. Uh, now, um, so uh, Bartholomew, tell me what else you've, uh, what have you been doing lately? It, it seems that I, I heard, I remember you mentioning that you might put together some kind of little uh, little group for people that like to adventure. Is this what this is? Indeed. We get adventures, all manner of adventures from all oh. over the world, as you can see you with uh, Frostbite here. Oh, I believe it was Frostbite Bartholomew. You know, I'm picky about names. You shouldn't say anyone's name wrong. Oh, yes. I apologize very much, chat. Well, not, not to me. You should apologize to Frostbite here. Indeed, Frostbite. You are one of my fabled adventurers. I apologize very much. There, there. It is, it is quite all right, Bartholomew. I mean, I know you're getting on in years. And um, at this point, you see uh, Chatter kind of stand up like, well, all right, it was uh, very nice to meet all of you. I guess, um, you know, I have my own business to attend to. I haven't, frankly, I'm a bit late for work. I I've kind of been playing hooky for a bit, uh, but I, I think I, I think it's probably time for me to be on my way. Uh, oh, and she goes wait, to- I come all this way to catch up with old friends. I insist we- Speak so uh, Indeed, I... what kind of work do you do? Oh, that's a lovely question. You see, um, I, and, and at this point, that question, like, it seems to, like, really confuse her. Uh, and where was I going? I don't know, I just, and, and she has, like, the club in her hand, which she seems to have just picked up unconsciously. I, I was just, I picked up my club, and I was going to, perhaps I don't have work today. Um, we can just chat. Uh, I guess we can just keep chatting. Well, well what do you all do for you for work? I, I know that you're adventurers. Um, I, Othred, it sounds like you have quite a craftsmanship business. Indeed, I do. Um, now, I, I'm curious. Why do you make things out of bone? It seems like steel. If you're gonna, if you're doing weapons, it seems like steel or any number of metals would be more durable and make for better weapons. I mean, forgive me. I hope I don't mean to insult, uh, but it just seems like an inefficient building material for what you're trying to do. I have found that many people think that metal will make up for a lack of detail and care in your craftsmanship. If you oh. wish to make a truly superb weapon or a precise tool that it must be made of good spirit as well as good material. It must be reminiscent of something natural to the world to take a natural place. That is... Uh, when it comes down to it, a little bit of mind magic will make any bone as strong as steel. Uh, but I'm, I'm very interested in... in... Uh, your takes on art. Um, it seems that you believe. Uh, are, would you describe yourself as, as more of a practical creator, or do you do you think that what you create is artwork? I'm, I'm interested. Is it is it just for hobbyism, or or do you strive to create beautiful things? I would say there is beauty in practicality. Um, that is, if I make 
a very fancy weapon that will break upon its first hunt, then it was not a good weapon. But if I make a weapon that is strong and will last a lifetime for that hunter, then that is a beautiful weapon. But couldn't beauty be any such thing? I, I mean, what about the beauty of, of say, a, a summer's day or a sunset? It's a sunset. It's fleeting. Would not, if you made something that was beautiful but fragile, it also be a, a work of art? I have not considered this. Just, just some of my thoughts. Uh, just, uh, well, again, this has been uh, this has been quite lovely. But I really think I should be going. I, as I was saying before, I'm, I have to go to work. Uh, and she goes and picks up the club again and starts rising up. And oh, what exactly? Wait, is there Jeff, <laughs> don't forget, you have the day off. Yes, what day is it, Alicia? It's Friday. Everyone Sunday. knows you're off. Yes. Uh, and she kind of sits back down. Did I have the day off? I... That's right. How can I be so silly? Thank you so much, Elysia. I can be quite the scatterbrain sometimes. Uh, and uh, anyway, I'm sorry. Where were we? Oh, we were talking about the inner workings of art and whether duration makes them beautiful, or whether they can exist in a single bright point that flashes away in that kind of art. Um, what are your thoughts, Elysia? I don't know, I like both, but I really like the big art that just... Like, like an explosion! An explosion <laughs> is like the most pure form of art. Just a sudden instance, if you blink, if you aren't even paying attention, it's lost, but... Nothing can be brighter or more powerful. Elysia, you seem to have a bit of a... Uh, you seem to have a bit of a spark in you. Uh, can you do such a thing? I would love to see it. Well, I suppose I can't very well let my art go unexposed. Are you ready? I'm, I'm absolutely ready. I will stand up and look for at least something kind of uh, clear, so I'm not going to be starting a forest fire in the yeah, secret. you can kind of go straight up if you want. Excellent. I uh, get ready, and... I'm going right, to see right. if I have any fun augments for an explosion. And you know what? For this, we're going to go straight on in and burn six charges of my Wand of Fireballs to cast a sixth level Fireball. Ooh! <laughs> All right. It's just out of curiosity, go ahead and roll me that damage. All right. The initial, um... Wait, it seems like it should be... Uh, uh just... Yeah! Uh, okay, so the initial... <laughs> kind of blast upwards, uh, kind of it explodes, and then out of it just <sighs> more torrents of flame seem to spread uh, and uh, dash outwards from it. And she goes, oh, 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 how wonderful, wonderful. How did you do that? Oh, I'm a bit of a uh, practicer of the magical arts. I'm not quite on Bartholomew's level, but I'm getting closer every day. Oh, I have a, I can do some magic as well. Would you like to see? You can! Yes, 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 please! Oh, I'll just go and get my wand. It's back at home. Uh, and she stands up. Oh, don't worry about that. I have a wand oh, right no. here you can use. It's no problem at all. Uh, oh, well, it has to be my own. I, I can't just attune to a wand immediately. Uh, and, and she's standing up and, and walking out. Oh, what about that? Right there! Your large weapon does not now work for you. Uh, and she kind of stops and looks at, Oh, you mean my... my club? Oh, it's uh, like a giant wand! I see, that's so cool! Oh, yes, well, it's it's not a wand, but I can show you my club. She sits back down, uh, she drops it on the table. <laughs> uh, it kind of shatters. I honestly, <laughs> as I was saying before, I don't know why I even bother carrying this thing anymore. It's just the, the sacred veil can sometimes be so dangerous, and it's just nice to have it for the security, you know? And it's really pretty! Oh, thank you. Uh, I mean, it's, and looks to you, Othor, it's no 
bone halberd. I, I will admit that there's a bit more craft in yours, but there's something about an object that you've just had for so long. It just becomes kind of well-worn from use, and, you know, I use it as a walking stick from time to time. Well, not in some years, but uh, has it really been years that I've been here? And she kind of gets dazed again. I believe that a weapon that has survived with its owner and stood strong together is a beautiful weapon indeed. It is a lovely club. Thank you very much. Your words honor me, Othgerard. Thank you. Uh, and, well, I also am quite fond of it. And she looks over towards, uh, she looks over towards you now, Frostbite. So, Frostbite, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm an assassin. Oh, dear. An assassin? You mean you take people's lives? Yes. Um, that is, uh, well, that is quite a, a way to make a living. Uh, and as you're, uh, and as she's kind of saying that, you see someone kind of emerges from the forest over to the side, uh, and uh, a voice kind of calls out, Finally! The promised day is at hand! Sh Shatter, I have found you! The one who was prophesized, who will bring the destruction in the ends! Uh, Excuse and... me, but... This is not Chatter, this is Chatter. You have the wrong deity. Uh, and, she, and she kind of looks over and goes, uh, this individual is correct. I am not, I am not this Chatter that you speak of. I mean, you know, I am getting very tired of people coming here and saying that. Uh, and um, he goes, no, you are Shatter, the god of destruction, who will- Oh, Scrooge, do you mind? Who can, who can drink the ocean and who can- Excuse me. Newcomer, may I talk to you privately one moment? I am here to, uh, and no, I am here to, to see the awakening. Uh, and he kind of steps closer and gets closer to the table. Uh, you and... can see that after I talk to you for a moment. It is important. You're being really rude. Her name's Chatter. You can't just keep saying her name wrong even after she's corrected you. Indeed, uh, and Elysia, thank you so much. You don't have to stick up for me, but it I appreciate it. It shows, well, honestly, honestly, I feel like we might be becoming friends. Do you? I sure hope so. You're really nice. I like you. Oh, thank you. I like you as well. Uh, and Indeed, uh, I have learned my own, through my own grievous error, and you should probably apologize. And if you cannot, then Oathgroot can... Will remove you from the situation. Uh, and the cultist is kind of he, he, like you can tell they're a cultist. Uh, they have like a lot of weird face paint, and like you can see they're like holding like a um, what's what's the word for it? a sensor, uh, and they're kind of like ritually burning like this really acrid, acrid sm smelling smoke, and they're like moving their hands in some kind of like ritualistic thing, trying to like do something. Uh, it doesn't seem to like have any actual magic. It's just like they're just trying to like activate shatter in some strange way or whatever, but Odgert, you walk up to him. Uh, what do you do? I will pick him up and carry him away. Uh, go ahead and make uh, an athletics check to grapple. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, he could crit, technically. Oh, he, he gets it if he crits, but yeah, he crit fails. Um, and you, uh, you just kind of reach down and scoop him up and he's kind of kicking. He drops the little sensor and it falls onto the ground. Uh, and, uh, Chatter, who was kind of looking over at him, looks back over towards, anyway, where were we? You kill people, Frostbite. Yes. Uh, mm. is, the, is that fulfilling for you? It is what my queen asks of me. And, well, forgive the colloquialism. But if your queen asked you to jump off a bridge, would you? If it was if it was necessary, yes. Uh, why? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I just uh, I, I know every culture is different, but I just can't understand that. <laughs> well, I I would assume my queen would not just asked me to jump off a bridge without reason. Okay. Yes. But, but, let's say in a hypothetical situation that I'm going to invent right now, 
let's do. Would you want to do a role play? Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be the queen, and you be you, pretending to be you in front of the queen. Okay. Okay. Uh, what does the queen sound like? Does she have a voice? <laughs> Can I, well, can of you do course a voice? she has a voice. Well, I know she has a voice, but like any notes for me? Is is there anything in particular I could do to be more like the queen? I'll try. Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'll try and I'm do not my exactly best. Sure. I mean, she has her own way of thinking. I mean, I'll try and do my most queenly voice. Are you ready? All right. Frostbite. You are to go out. And a bridge is yonder. You will jump off of it immediately, post haste. Uh, <laughs> she looks at you expectantly. Why is it you wish me to do this? It is necessary for the kingdom. The queendom. Sorry about that, I almost messed up. The queendom. <laughs> For the hive! And she kind of like looks very proud as she remembers that. <laughs> and in what way will this benefit the hive, my queen? Ah, great question. Uh, the answer is, and she thinks for some time and goes, at the bottom of the bridge, there's a great sheet of ice ice under which a number of our people are frozen and only the impact of your assassin-like body diving with your powerful ice magic could destroy it and save hundreds of lives very well then i shall do this but you'll die <laughs> that is why you had me become one of our fellow news adventures is it not that's a great point uh and she kind of like settles back down and goes the scenario that I created, I think I would have done it too, honestly. I kind of get it now. <laughs> Thank you very much for explaining, Frostbite. You are welcome. Um, well, anyway, I do have to get going. Uh, you kind of are, are dragging this guy off into the woods, Odgar. Uh He's just kind of like kicking and just going... Uh, uh, he's just kind of kicking in your arms. He's going... I'm here to bring about a hundred years, a thousand reign of destruction. Could we you go over see stone, stone Circle? Yeah, you're outside. You're outside into the woods. Unhand me! Unhand me! repeatedly bite his neck. Oh no! He's dead. He dies when you bite him until he dies. Uh, <laughs> you just drop the body? Yes. Okay. Away off in the woods. Yes. All right. You go off in the woods and you leave him behind. You walk back. Uh, you can see um, Shatter's just getting up again because she's finished. Uh, she's finished talking to. Um, uh, she's finished talking to Frostbite, and she was just going. All right. Well, I must be going. Um, I will. Um... One question, Shatter. Your oh, yeah. queen voice is really, really good. Do you oh, well, often you. do these? scenarios where you and the people you talk with take on different personas to play out different and interesting encounters? Indeed, uh, from time to time. I, I It's something of a hobby. I, I wouldn't say I do it often, but it's something of a hobby and it's a good way to try and put yourself in the shoes of another. There's so much one can learn about others by, well, just trying to see things from their perspective. Like I would just like was demonstrated with frostbite there. Ooh, we should all do that. Do you have any scenarios you're particularly fond of? Um, scenarios. I, if you would like to recommend something, I would be happy to do another one. Okay, how about this? You can be the queen again. You were really good as a queen. Oh, thank and you. We can be like your knights and entourage, and we can be going to another kingdom on royal business. I don't know what kind of royal business it could be, but you're the queen, so that's up to you, I guess. Oh, yes, so, Alicia, I really quite like that idea. Just remember, the queen must never leave her throne. This is another fun game that you've recommended. I'm not, I'm going to say, I'm not big on games on the whole, but 
I think this might be fun anyway. So, want to give it a try? Of course, my queen! <laughs> okay. Um, and she goes, wait, allow me once more. I need to really get in focused. Uh, I, I want to once more embody what it means to be a queen. And uh, she kind of closes her eyes for some time. I am the queen once more! Forthwith! <laughs> Uh, and she looks <laughs> over at the four of you, and each of you is a knight. What are your knightly names? My knights, I already know them, of course, but speak them anyway, my knights. I'm Sir Jim of Jameson. <laughs> I'm not going to remember these, says P. Uh, Sir Jim of Jameson uh, looks next. Well, I don't usually take orders, I usually make them, but for now I will be Sir Barty of the Shop. Barty of the Shop. Gem of Jameson and Barty of the Shop, and you... Oh, looks to you, Ogre. <laughs> what is ongoing? I am... Um... Oh, you're an... Um, okay, this is... Uh, we were doing this before, and you didn't quite... Uh, you weren't quite around. Uh, you were off speaking to that. Where did that other gentleman go? I helped He's... him find the person he was looking for. Oh, wonderful. Yes, uh, he said something about a shatter. Uh, I, and then her face kind of blanks. And she goes and, like, her hand kind of reaches over for the club. Yeah, somebody completely different. Oh, I yes. think he was actually looking for a ladder. A oh, ladder. La a, a ladder. Uh, we don't have any of those here, unfortunately, for him, but I hope he finds one. We're, we're role-playing. Uh, you, you're pretending to be, what was it, knights? That's right, my queen. Knights. And I, I'm sorry. Uh, allow me to get back into my queen. She closes her eyes again and focuses again really hard. The queen has returned. You, sir, are a knight. What is your knightly name? I am Sir How of... Bird. <laughs> um, but she's, so how of bird? It's good to see you again. <laughs> and she looks to you, Frostbite. I am, uh, Sir Earl of Sandwich. Sir Earl of Sandwich. How wonderful. Oh, I could really, I would love it. Uh, and she kind of looks down and before she finishes her sentence, there's just a huge sandwich there. Oh, delicious. And she picks it up and just in one bite, just devours it. You just say, oh, yes. And, so, and she looks back to you, Alicia. So now what was it? I was to send you on a task of some kind? I think uh, that's the plan. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay, I'll be the queen again. Uh, and she looks over. Now I doth send thee upon yon quest for a powerful artifact. Go now and find it and bring it back. And she kind of points for you guys to like leave. Are you My going queen, to leave? the kingdom will not be safe if all of the knights leave on this. We, we should have you accompany us. In the royal... The royal... What's the really fancy cart that, uh, like, the big war horses pull? I can never think of the... Is it, no, is it a chariot? I thought a chariot had an open back, though. Oh, so we're moving and talking. That's very interesting. Um, and... So, uh, yes, we're all on this quest together. What a brilliant idea, Alicia. Indeed, my grace, but you must be seated in your chariot. Uh, and she kind of looks at you, oh, and there's, there is no need to refer to your queen as, as my grace. I'm a very casual queen. Uh, perhaps just, uh, should I pick a fake name? Of course. Yeah, something Perhaps. very queenly. Uh, well, my usual name is is Shatter. Perhaps Shatter. Uh, you couldn't call me Shatter. It just popped into my head. <laughs> uh, uh, 
and uh, yeah, you guys are on a quest with the queen, uh, with, with, with Shatter, yeah. Uh, and she goes, all right. Was... Queens have two names, what will be other name? Uh, she kind of thinks for some time. Of course, the young queen has two names. Uh, I will be Shatter and Elysia. <laughs> I could, she looks at you, Elysia, and looks kind of I don't mean to steal your name. I was all I could think of. Don't worry. That's how these kind of things go when you just have something pop in your head. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm just going to roll with it. And she looks back over to you, Ogrid. All right, then. Um, so, uh, it looks like we're on a quest. Uh, and I, Shatter, uh, say that we should go and... I don't know what kind of quest sounds fun. I said we were looking for the relic, but honestly, I, all this, all this talk of killing. Oh, go ahead, Bartholomew. Oh, queens are known by their latter name. Oh, but uh, as I was saying before, this queen wants to be called by. I don't know. There's something I it like about it. It is your Sh family Shatter. name, the name of your empire. It uh, is a sign of great power and, and respect. respect. So you don't yes. like? She goes, she goes. So you don't like Shatter, huh? Okay. I'll no, go ahead and make we a, must use Elysia. Go ahead it and make is a only polite for polite conversation. Uh, go ahead well, and make queen... a persuasion check. Uh. Well, the queen might want to be super casual, as loyal knights were required to use the more formal name. I suppose, as the queen, I will be forced to allow it. I do not wish to tempt your chivalry. We shall forward, uh, uh, as I am Elysia, uh, and so uh, I think it's about maybe five minutes to where we're going, so we can just talk in the meantime, uh, and so how are all of you? You know, I'm such a gossip, I'm doing role roleplay, I just kind of want to talk in, in chat, you know? Oh, I feel that way too. So why don't we just talk about other things for a while, then when we get there, we'll go back and we can be the knights again. And I'll be the queen again. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so, um, and actually, I do, I, I would like to just step out for just a moment, uh, because I, uh, well, I will, a bit of personal business I have to tend to, and she picks up the club uh, and goes uh, to- uh, What sort of business is that? Um, if you don't mind my asking. You know something? I, I suppose it can wait. Um, now, Frostbite, you mentioned before that, uh, and as she's kind of saying this, um, as she's kind of saying this in, in the middle of that sentence, um, the entire space around you becomes absolutely silent. She just kind of is opening her mouth and speaking and no words are coming out. Uh, and sh as she kind of speaks, you see her kind of testing it a few more times. Um, and she looks around at the group of you. She speaks. There's no sound. You can't hear anything. You guys are all suddenly deafened. Um, she kind of reaches down and takes her kind of fist and goes and just kind of like hits it on the table a couple times. Um, and it's just again it's completely silent she takes her fist again and slams it on the table what looks like a little bit more force and you see the table around you just <laughs> explode into a a shower of splinters and just kind of small pieces of wood uh and and bits of kind of material uh and almost instantly kind of <laughs> reforms into the same table uh and she's just looking kind of confused a little bit scared uh and is starting to kind of get up and stand what do you all do I will go over to food plate, magic food plate. Uh, also, I'd like you to roll for initiative. As time is now of the essence, as you can't hold her in conversation. Um, uh, all right, and um, uh, Chatter goes last. So uh, the first to act in this case is Sir Jim of Jameson. Uh, Sir Jim. I will pick up my food plate 
really suddenly for some reason in all this quiet, hankering for alphabet soup. Um, all right. Um, you, uh, you got kind of a sudden hankering for alphabet soup and, and such. It's not a food plate, it's a food bowl and it's filled with it. I fish out some letters to just spell, this is weird, are, are you okay? And see if I can't get her attention to see if she won't. Um, you probably don't have time for the, that whole, this is weird, are you okay? As this is like a rounded initiative. You have about six seconds. Um, you have maybe like one word. What do you do? I have the letter U and a K and a little rip of one, like a question mark and tr Excellent. UK? UK, uh, and, uh, all right. Um, yeah, uh, it, it immediately, um, uh, Chatter looks down at the bowl that you have before you as you kind of, you know, gesture to her and to it as she's looking around worried and getting ready to leave. Uh, and she looks at it and just goes, she shakes her head and kind of points to her ears and kind of points to her mouth uh, and just kind of makes a motion like, no, I can't hear, I can't speak. Uh, and she's kind of like uh, turning to, uh, she's kind of like turning to, to get out of there. Um, so uh, next up in initiative is going to be uh, Yoshi, what do you want to do? I will uh, go over to her and we'll try to comfort her. We're old friends. Uh, all right. Um, what do you do? You kind of walk around the, um, do you like walk around kind of between her and the outside? Because you guys are like on the opposite side of the table as her. So you go around. <laughs> um, what like motion do you do or, or how do you try and comfort her? Do you have any like strategy or are you just going to kind of like stand in front of her and block her path? I grab her shoulder, kind of try and set her down. Um, your, her shoulder is way above you. Her arm, or her Fair hand, enough. her wrist. Her hand, uh, and you kind of go and, and, and set her down. All right, go ahead and make me a persuasion check. Uh, it's going to be a hard DC, but go ahead and make me a persuasion check. All right. Um, yeah, you kind of have a success. Uh, she's she's calming down a little bit. Um, she she looks around, and you kind of grab her hand, and, and she kind of... Uh, she's she's still standing, but she's no longer motioning to like immediately exit. Um, that's going to bring us now to. Uh, now it is, Oathbird. What do you want to do? I have a different craving. I desire a big bowl of tomato sauce and little breadsticks. Uh, tomato sauce and breadsticks. Uh, you got it. And using breadstick as basic brush, I will draw a very tomatoey little smiley face on table. A um, sign of goodwill. Uh, yes, uh, very good. You you do a uh, you do a quick tomatoey face on the table, uh, and uh, you see uh, Chatter kind of looks down at it. Uh, go ahead, and I'll let you make uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to let you make a What kind of check would I say this would be? Uh, I, I think this might be a check with your tools, your artisan's tools for the quality of your smiley face. I'll let you also make like a just an unskilled charisma check or like a persuasion check. I, I think all of those could maybe be justified. Uh, persuasion. Um, she kind of looks down at it, uh, and, and she looks at it, uh, and, you know, she doesn't, like, she's still very, like, scared looking. Uh, that's going to bring us to Frostbite. Frostbite, what do you want to do? I'm hankering for alphabet cookies. <laughs> alphabet cookies. Uh, I mean, you have uh, just a, a plate, of, plate of cookies appears before you with, uh, plate of cookies appears <laughs> before you with some letters on them, some letter-shaped cookies. All right. Uh, Again, you got maybe a word. Yeah. Uh, trying to think of a word here. Uh, sound. Um, 
Okay, you you um you do the word sound. Yeah. Um, and and she kind of looks at it and goes. She kind of shakes her head no. Um, and uh, as it moves on to her turn, um, she's still standing. Uh, she picks up the club, uh, and is now just kind of holding it. Uh, and you see her kind of for the first time. She's been just kind of waving around with one hand. She takes a second hand and kind of puts it around the base and is kind of gripping it tightly and getting into what looks like a an almost like defensive like I need to fight for my life kind of posture. Um, and you can see like uh, her eyes, uh, which have been just this kind of like very pleasant looking blue, are starting to like darken to almost like a black color. Um, and that's all that's going to happen on her turn. We switch around to top of the initiative. Uh, that's going to bring us to Yoshi. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's um, Sir Jimbo Jameson, a.k.a. Elysia. Does she have her club raised up fairly high, or is it She's holding it like a, almost like a baseball bat, uh, but in, directly in front of her, not to the side. How high up are her hands? Um, her hands are, now they're at, like, chest level, which means they're, like, 20 feet up. Okay. Ah, uh, in that case, I will kind of just tuck behind her and kind of pat her leg to a nice, calming little rhythm, kind of hoping to soothe her down a bit. Um, you, uh, uh, all right, go ahead and make me a, um, go ahead and make me a persuasion check, I think, at this point. Uh, also, what are your passive perceptions? Eleven. Okay. Fifteen. Um, Ignore the plus two. Uh, okay. Eleven. Eleven. All right, Odgrud, um You're detecting out of the kind of corridor of your vision as things are kind of uh, coming down a little bit. You're noticing, and you're the only one who does um, some like movement in the woods on the outskirts of the circle. Um, that is uh, so. Yeah, you make your persuasion check twenty. Um, yeah, um, the, the grip on the club kind of loosens a bit. Um, she kind of goes back to holding it in one hand. It slacks down to the side. You see it kind of, uh, as it falls and, and hits the stone, it once again, just the weight of it like being let go, cracks the stone and some of the ground and sends some like fissures that again repair themselves. Um, what uh, uh, And that's probably all for your turn. As we move now to, uh, it is Biyoshi now. Biyoshi, what do you want to do? Well, I will take out one of my notebooks and uh, begin to sort of, you know, writing in it a little bit. And I will create a nice, pleasant breeze with some nice, mm, beautiful aromas for her. Uh, as you go to create this kind of nice and, and very pleasant breeze, um, you go to um, you go to kind of speak yourself and the incantation for the spell. You realize that you can't cast the spell. Uh, because you need to use your voice in order to do so. Uh, as you're uh, as you're kind of incanting over your tome. Does that take my turn still? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it does. I think it okay. does in this instance. Uh, I mean, you still have a bonus action. You can move. You can try and like do it like a motion. I'll, I'll let you do like a like a minor like motion or, or some kind of like action you want to take, but not like cast another spell or anything. I will simply motion to set for her. Um, okay, uh, go ahead and make me another uh, persuasion check. Everyone's going to help him. Um, 21. All right. Yeah, uh, you guys are doing really good on these. Jeez. Uh, and um, yeah, well, on her turn, she might react. Uh, and that's going to bring us now to you, Ogre. I will hold up my hands as if to say, stop and stay. And then I shall move out of the circle in the direction of the movement. Uh, and the second that you step outside of the circle, uh, you can just hear kind of chanting coming from around the woods surrounding you. Uh, you can hear, the hour of destruction is now at hand. Soon Shatter shall be released unto the world. And these fools cannot get in our way. Uh, uh, what do you do, Ogret? I will point at Frostbite, then forward, and run towards the chanting. All right. Uh, you uh, 
duck off you <laughs> duck into the wood um and um yeah uh, as you do so you you run into him uh, and you can see a number of cultists that are dressed similarly to the one that you annihilated before uh are kind of all like there uh, and they're just kind of speaking in low ter- they're just kind of speaking sha tur sha tur sha tur uh and then um you can kind of see in the woods also on the the kind of side that you're on um uh as you look in you can see like uh, one cultist that's kind of like holding this uh, this very large looking book uh, that's kind of open and they're kind of have their hands over it uh, and they're just kind of like incanting the one that was like speaking the most loudly uh, they're kind of like incanting something over the book um, yeah uh, and that's uh, I think your turn to like get there uh, and see all of this but you're now on the scene you kind of see what's going on here um, within the circle you guys see Othgerwerk step outside like a little bit outside the circle uh, and then all of a sudden, just bolt and take off. Uh, frostbite. Okay. Uh... Oh, I want to check something. Quick. But I, I have an idea of what I want to do. Okay. I'm going to step outside the circle. Okay. And... Yet you immediately hear the chanting and all of the stuff. Yeah. Let's see. I am... Can I see the cultists? Or... Um, well, as, as soon as you step out, you can, yeah, like, now that you're paying attention, you can see some of, like, the people in the woods. You can also see where Odgerot went. Right. And you, uh, you can hear them. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run into the cultists and try and get as many of them in my... And I'm going to use the Midas ring. Okay. Oh, um, if you want to like, because it's like a little bit longer to like get into the woods and kind of see them proper, uh, you would have to go all the way up. So if you want to go and get them, basically, you would have to also hit Ogre in the AOE if you want to cast it this turn, or you could line it up this turn for next turn. Um, uh, Ogre, um, what do you think? Are you okay with this, or solve the problem, make world not die? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, you uh, use here, your minus here goes ring. the cone of gold, I guess. Uh, use your cone of gold. <laughs> yes, then. Uh, great. Great. Yeah, idea. I just have to change one of the damages, though. Because it. I, oh, uh, no worries. Yeah, one of the damages that's supposed to be not cold, and I don't remember what it's supposed to be. I think force or something? All right, they are going to make <laughs> Jesus that roll. Um, they are going to make a Constitution saving throw. Um, uh, what is that area of effect? A sixty foot cone. All right, so you yeah. can get, um, you can get a lot of them. They're not like because they're in kind of like a bit of a circle around the place. You can't get like all of them, but most of them are concentrated in that area, uh, and a whole bunch of them are going to make con saves. Um, oh, oh. Um, That's true. Three. Uh, and... Four. Alright, you can get, uh, you're gonna get, uh, seven of them with this one, uh, and of them, three succeed. Uh, so yeah, four of them, uh, instantly, uh, as you kind of send out your cone of gold, it just kind of sweeps over the area, and Odger, uh, you need to make a save against this as well. Uh, uh, you're gonna, oh man, Odger, what's your health? <laughs> 60. Okay. Oh, you, you are not a statue. You yeah. Um, you, you take 41 points of cold damage, as do um, most of the cultists here. All of the ones that take that are instantly just turned into statues. Um, the ones that... Um, the ones that didn't take it, uh, the one that was kind of like the leader of the pack uh, was a little bit farther back uh, and wasn't quite in it, but all of the regular cultists that, that take this damage are looking 
haggard or are completely turned transformed into golden statues as the coat of gold spreads throughout the area. Othgur, you are also now pretty fucking hurt. I can, I can make art too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as we move around, excellent. Uh, as we move around to the top of the, actually the bottom of the initiative, which would be um, the cultists and um, and Chatter. Uh, Chatter, uh, from you kind of like gesture to sit down in Elysia, you're still there as well. Uh, and uh, Chatter just kind of slowly kind of slumps down into the chair uh, and just looks a little bit sad. Um, some of the like the darkness that was starting to like pool up uh, in Chatter's eyes seems to be fading. Uh, and the cultists are going to go. Um, there are three of those cultists left. All of them are going to uh, come over and, and try and get you, Othgur, uh, because they are too far away to get to. Uh, too far away to get to. Away. Oh, that's a 19. <laughs> 12 and a 7. Do Does 12 hit? I assume not. No. Alright. Um, and I assume 19 does for 4 slashing damage? Yes. Uh, and then the cult leader uh, is going to um, uh, is going to look over at you and is going to they're kind of like, they still have their tome open, uh, but they kind of move their hands and kind of throw something off seeming to like catch part of it and throw it off uh, and they are going to make an attack against you. Uh, with this spell, inflict wounds you. Oh wait, I rolled it incorrectly. Um, uh, at second level. I'd like to reiterate. Like, I'm sorry for <laughs> that. Oh, that's a that's a twenty to hit. Or that is a beefy amount of damage too. That's another twenty five points of necrotic damage. I am done. Ogerert goes down. Actually, uh, in this instance, that's be crazy. Uh, that's going to bring us... There's only a few cultists left, but um, they're all uh, they're all still up. Uh, or the ones that are, are there are actually really pretty beat up. That's going to bring us around to the top of the order, which is uh, in this instance, it's going to be... Elysia, what do you want to do? How far away did it appear when uh, Othru went dashing off? Um, I mean, it's in that you saw the direction. It's tough to like discern the exact distance. He's like up in the woods ahead, um, round about round about sixty feet, like a full move to get there, basically. Where he's at? Uh, yeah. Oh, I thought I had a different meta magic than I do have. You gonna step out? Play Elysia. Oh, I could have used my little well, I just realized that. Yeah, Elysia will begin heading uh, the 30 feet to step out of the air. All right, you um, you you step out of the uh, you step out of the ring, uh, and you can kind of see your ally downed over on the side. He's 30 feet away now. Uh, yeah. Okay. I will... Ah, all the things I had planned, I did not have this planned. But let's go with the good stuff. I burn a sorcery point to third level distance spell cure wounds on it. Awesome. Uh, go ahead and roll that healing. Ogre, you <gasps> feel the life snap back into your lungs as you gain uh, 19 points. Uh, 19 points of healing uh, and kind of looking um, well, not quite yet. Um, that's going to bring us next initiative to old I look back and right, smile old, sorry, you before yeah. you've been an old man all day, so I got confused. And uh, how big is this circle? Uh, it's 20 foot radius. How far the... am I from the edge? <laughs> Uh, from the edge of it, you are, um, well, you're next to, if you want to go out, like, the side that they're on, um, you'd have to walk kind of, like, most of the distance. Uh, if you want to just, like, step out the back, um, you can take maybe a ten-foot step and get there. I will take that ten-foot step. Alright. 
And uh, well, I think somebody see. should. I, so I, how far are they from me? Um, at this point, uh, the angles are a little funky in the visual first. space, but I mean, like sixty feet is a fair number. Easy enough. I will uh, take out another notebook. Of course, this one is not as necessary, and I will rip out a page and throw it. Um, just toss a fireball in the forest. Right or no throw. Um. Wait, why? Because it will hit everything except him. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Uh, you <laughs> toss the uh, you toss the huge uh, fireball out into the area, uh, and it kind of explodes uh, this time. Um, Ogrert, uh, the fire kind of explodes. You're like, oh no, not again! I'm already downed, uh, and the fire <laughs> coils up and uh, kind of creates almost a barrier around you uh, by some impressive uh, tone precision. And then you um, uh, you watch as all of the cultists that are, uh, all of the cultists that are left surrounding you, uh, the ones that were like kind of ganging up on you uh, are just ashes. They did not have enough health left to even, even if they saved, they were dead from the previous kind of cold in combination with it. Uh, so yeah, all that's left is the one cultist who's got the big book. Um, and is presumably the, the source of the spell is they're kind of like, they seem to be like maintaining a chant. Um, and I believe... Bartholomew will yell out to make sure the tome is not destroyed. And then I will use the rest of my moment to go back into the circle and sit down calmly across from Chatter. All right. And reach out for her hand. All right, uh, you do that. You sit down calmly, um, and uh, that's going to bring us to Oathgurt. I am fireproof, Wizard. <laughs> Fear me. <laughs> I charge this last cultist directly. All right. Uh, go ahead and make me your attack rolls. I will start by taking a great fight out of him with hung. Um, all right. Uh, he is going to make a concentration check. Which he succeeds, uh, but you hit. For five points of piercing damage. Ah! He kind of racks in pain, uh, but he's kind of maintaining uh, the spell of silence that he's casting. And now I will follow up with my two actual attacks. Um, a 10 is actually going to miss, uh, but a 23 will hit. Oh. Um, and, um, all right, so you, uh, you bite into him for... Uh, for five points of piercing damage, and then swing the halberd around and uh, cut in for another, gosh, uh, 14 points of damage with one swing. Uh, and he kind of howls out in pain. Oh! Uh, and you watch as the kind of book that he's holding, kind of the magic that was pouring out of it, uh, the book kind of closes shut. Uh, and uh, you hear on the other side, over next to, uh, over next to uh, Yubiyoshi, uh, Chatter just goes, Oh, 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 oh thank God. Oh, I was so scared. Uh, what was that, Bartho? What was that silence magic? It was terrifying me. Oh, oh, oh don't you worry. Sometimes you just need to sit down and think. Uh, and uh, the um, uh, the cultist, his allies just completely wiped out. Um, he just kind of like leans back and kind of like staggers down and just kind of falls, uh, falls down in front of you uh, as we move now towards you, Frostbite. Uh, <sighs> magic missile level three. Um, or right. level two magic missile is what I meant to say. Pull it up. Three. Uh, that's gonna that is gonna hit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just trying to remember the number of darts. Uh, that would be four, four darts. Yes, four darts. Uh, one. And then two, three, four. Ooh. Uh, so it's going to be 
8, 11, 17 points of free damage. The darts kind of impact, and he goes, oh! Uh, and he is uh, very nearly downed, but it is going to pass to um, his turn. Uh, and he kind of holds out his hand, uh, and he, um, he, he kind of fires uh, three missiles uh, towards you, responding to your spell in kind. Uh, responding to your spell in kind, uh, Frostbite. And the missiles, they kind of go up to, they go up towards you, uh, and they, uh, they whiz past, uh, and they go right by your head and over towards Chatter, and they impact. W would I be able to, to, to intercept that with, with the... Nah, they're not targeting no, you. No, that, that's not how magic missile works, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, it has to be targeted uh, against yeah. you. Um, and as long as as long as he can see, he can attack you with. Uh, and immediately, you watch as uh, the the expression on Chatter's face, the eyes just go completely dark again, uh, and the hand reaches down like lightning fast for the club, uh, and uh, is a is a reflex. Uh, Chatter just kind of takes the club, and just moving at a speed that completely defies her size, uh, just throws this huge, um, like, 40, 50 foot club through the woods uh, with apparently incredible precision. Uh, Odegar, I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Would danger sense apply to this? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll say it well. Uh, source, you can see. You're not, like, looking, but you can see her, so I'll do it to you. Yes, absolutely. You succeed. Uh, you uh, just kind of take a step backwards, uh, and as you do so, uh, the club just crashes uh, into the ground, uh, just creating a small crater uh, in the area that seems to like crack and shatter the ground around. Uh, and that one cultist uh, that's there on the ground is uh, how much damage they take? From the club? Uh, let me roll the damage on it. I assume it. Chatter, where are you? Where can I find your character? Ah, oh, there you are. We're about to find a... That's <laughs> what he did. That's going to hit for 177. Uh, as <laughs> this cultist is just dust, uh, and the area just kind of uh, erupts. Uh, and then you watch as that great club flies back and snaps back into Shatter's hand, who's now fuming and getting ready to, like, storm off. <sighs> Uh, as we move now on to the top of the initiative order, that is going to be uh, you with Lucia. What do you want to do? No! As the magic missiles go whizzing past, Elysia will turn around. Chatter! Chatter! Are you okay? Don't worry, I, I, I can heal you! And I will just kind of very clearly show in my concern for Chatter since we've become besties. I will dump a third level cure wounds into her and just try to calm her as best I can as I heal her. Um. That's a terrible cure. No, wait. That's. You know what? I'm going to burn a sorcery point to get advantage on my healing check. Or it's not advantage. I will reroll the two. Yeah, the two and the four. I will reroll, which is finicky. Um. That's 5 plus 11 for 16 instead of 11. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, you heal, her for, uh, you heal her for a good chunk of damage. Uh, it was just a first level spell slot. Uh, first level spell. I didn't bother rolling it because it just always hit. And her health is not going to get her down. But, uh, uh, but yeah, she kind of like, you watch as the tiny, like, you don't even see where the wound was. You just saw some of like the ash that was kind of left on where like, you know, maybe a hair got burnt. Uh, but it just kind of, you know, it heals up a little bit, uh, and she's still looking angry, uh, but you have one, uh, once again, you've kind of, like, lost some progress, but you have another success towards calming Chatter down again. Uh, uh, that's going to bring us next to Yoshi. What do you want to do? Well, now that I can speak, I will produce a light to breeze with a smell of honey. Mm. And just say, oh, look at that. And there must be a few bees around. Nothing to worry about, though. Uh, and uh, 
Shatter kind of calls out uh, her voice now seeming to be laced. Um, you, you can hear her old voice somewhere in there, but it seems like it's like echoed on top of her on top of itself multiple times uh, as she kind of responds. Honey, what is honey? <sighs> she kind of breathes it in deep, uh, and she's kind of looking around, um, angry, scared, uh, but she's breathing. Uh, that's gonna be... I'm sure you know my queen, Alicia. Um, and she kind of... <sighs> oh, Gert, what do you want to do? Some would explain the firework show to her, please. We we make show of shine. Someone, I cannot do this. Uh, Ogre, the turn is yours. It has to be you. What do you do? There are shiny statue people near you. I. I will walk back into the circle and check on Shatter. Okay. Uh, do you say anything, or do you just... What's the, uh... What's the, like, just, just walking in and just kind of, like, you know, uh, nodding concern and, and just hanging? Yes. All right. Um, go ahead and, and I'll say make me a, a charisma check with disadvantage. Unskilled charisma. For their, just for your kind of presence there in the moment. All right, yeah. Uh, you're there. She's still kind of fuming frostbite. Uh, all right. Uh, frostbite's going to try and drag one of the golden statues of the cultists back into the circle. Into the circle. Um, all right. You know, to, to show her the pretty artwork that he uh, made. Okay, yeah. Um, you drag, uh, it's only like a few, you just pick the one that was closest to the woods because you can only drag it like a couple feet, uh, but you put it down and, and what do you say? Or just kind of like, a, you like just gesture or, or what, what do you do? You just kind of pull it out and... Oh yeah, I just uh, pull it out and gesture like and say, look at the pretty statue I found in the in the woods uh, chatter uh, and she um she, she looks at it for a time go ahead and make me a persuasion check uh, and I will give you advantage for the efforts of all of your allies here all right advantage persuasion 11 um, she kind of uh, she kind of looks at the statue um, and you see like the club goes and uh, it, it kind of like pulls up and goes to uh, smash down on the statue uh, and kind of you in the area. I do need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. All right. Let's see what happens. Um, as the statue is destroyed. Uh, as the great club just kind of crashes down and the crater kind of fissures out. Um, just like the impact and the force of wind that blows you back uh, from the strike of it just sends you uh, careening. Uh, you get knocked back 30 feet uh, and you suffer uh, in a uh, that is if you fall, you take nine points of bludgeoning damage as you uh, just kind of crash into a tree as you're thrown to the side. Um, uh, and um, at that point, she kind of like smashes it, uh, and then the kind of club snaps back, uh, and she looks over to the side and kind of picks it up again to just hit again. Uh, and then she goes, uh, and then she just says, Wait. It's been. It's been five minutes. We're here. We're here! Our knights! 
and I, the queen, we've arrived on our quest destination, I believe. Well, actually, you we are... We sure are, my queen Alicia. You are, we're out a little bit. We are, we've already returned from our quest. Uthgur, please bring us, bring her some of the spoils that we discovered. Oh, oh, wait, wait, what? I was out for the quest. I remember I was here, and then there was that that weird silent time, and I, I was attacked, I think. Was I attacked? I remember having my big club here, and I was going to... I, I was just so angry, and I was ready to defend myself. It um, must have been dream. You must have fallen asleep in the quiet. It was a really good RP session. Sometimes they can get a little too vivid. I Don't worry, your knights were here to protect you. I apologize. The silence was my work, as you know. I know all manners of spells and incantations. I just didn't want to ruin the surprise. Oh, okay. Please don't do that again. That was very scary. Um, where's... Uh, where's... Frostbite, where did Frostbite go? And Frostbite, you're over like, <laughs> kind of slumped against a tree. Like the absolute wind knocked back at you, knocked out of you just from like being near the the attack. Like, uh, but Frostbite, you get up, you hop back over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, after I get up, I'm gonna just uh, walk out of the woods and say, I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. Oh, good. I, I was worried. I didn't know if you'd, you know, I know you liked, I know that you kill for a living. I didn't know if you, you know, business had arrived or something. So we arrived, we have all this treasure. How fun. This was a great role play. Usually, I'll be honest, I've done these role plays before and usually at the end of them, you don't get things. It's usually you just pretend that you did. So having all of this stuff is is great. How fun. I, um, perhaps I'll, uh, and, and she kind of stands up, let me go and arrange these. I bet you I can make a nice little kind of a sculpture around the area and kind of arrange them nice for my viewpoint here. Uh, uh, and she goes, uh, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll bring them to us... you. We'll bring them yes. to you. I'm still, we'll bring them to... still yes. treating me like a queen, I guess. Uh, that oh, is of course, my... you're of course oh, been nice I mean... to, to sit around your table. Yon Queen is happy for your excellent work, knights. Excellent work. Uh, and at this point, um, uh, Cecilia uh, kind of comes back uh, and walks back through the glade uh, and sees some of the uh, the destruction that has been wrought uh, and looks around. Is everything is everything okay? Uh, everything is great. Had some unexpected visitors. We became knights, and we got treasure for our queen! Okay, so everything... Chatter, it's good to see you again. Hi, Chatter. Sorry, I was, I was gone for a little while, but let's let's talk. How about it? And she goes, well, I, I was supposed to be going, but I would like to hear some of the latest gossip. How were things out there? Uh, and uh, you watch as, as Cecilia just kind of, looks, uh, kind of looks at you and just kind of gestures. Like, go ahead, go ahead, you're good. I'm still gonna drag the uh, cultist statue over yeah. to <laughs> over to the circle. Uh, yeah, Wonderful yeah. job, adventurers! You can all get a free pool for my bag, but not really. <laughs> uh, uh, and with that, um, congratulations! Uh, you have all been me. successful have a in this adventure. Tome to grab in that forest. Um, you go off and you grab your tome, uh, and before long. Um, you have, like I said, you've won. You've each earned 200 Bartholomew bucks. You've each gained one point of experience. Uh, congratulations. Uh, what did 